Good evening, we're live, it's 525, and I'm Lauren Glenn Davidian. I'm so pleased to be here with Henry Prine, my co-host today. We're celebrating 25 Christmases of CCTV and 20 Christmases of Channel 17. Henry, I bet that's older than you are. Yes, quite. <laughs> Henry has been working here as a volunteer and he also is a director and a community producer and we're going to be talking to a number of community producers today and uh, we'll also take your calls if you have any but in the meantime Henry tell us a little bit about how you started to work here at Channel 17. I've been volunteering here for a little over um, a year and a half now and I started just by volunteering and doing camp work on the live shows um, but since then I've been helping out I helped out the summer camp and I've been um, going out in the community and um, taping some events and it's really awesome it's a great group of people here and it's great it's awesome to here. and you know you did that great piece with Megan where you went out on the street and you asked people about public access TV yeah that was a really awesome piece were you surprised at whether people knew access or it was a lot more people that I thought actually watched some access TV and a lot of I, almost everybody we talked to knew about it so we're going to um, we're going to interview James Giroux now. He has been doing a great show, The Artful Wor Word, for many, many, many episodes, and um, and then we'll talk to Jen Berger, who from the Peace and Justice Center, and a couple of other folks, and then we'll give out some awards, and you can help me do that. Okay, awesome. All right, good. So James, why don't you come on over? We're going to um, I'm going to have you come stand right here next to Henry. Henry's going to sort of be our standby guy. Welcome. Thank you so much for the work you're doing on The Artful Word. Well, thank you for having me at Channel 17. It's been uh, quite an experience for me. It's been great to have you. Now, this is a half-hour show that you produce every week, pretty much, right? Well, they're letting me go to 55 minutes, and they're telling me to keep it to 55 minutes, but sometimes I've got away with doing a two-hour show. Uh, I go anywhere from a half-hour to uh, try to keep it within about 55 minutes, but they give me a lot of slack here for some reason. Well, we, we give people slack because it's public access. Well, it's government access, but it's all access, and it's really all about you having the opportunity to use the equipment and tell the stories of the community. Right, and uh, it's been really great to get out in the community, and uh, I feel that you probably don't have any favorites here, uh, but I'd just like to say I come in here every Monday, and I'm not one of the staff here, but I'm coming in working with professionals, and I feel like I fit in here, and it, it, it's just been a joy. Uh, it's just been a pleasure to work here. Well, it's been great to have you, and I understand one of the one of the things that you really appreciate is that because over time you've had encountered a lot of different people, and now they recognize you and they'll work with you, and they're probably a lot more cooperative than they were at first. Right. Uh, uh, I've got to know the governor, uh, uh, senators, congressmen, uh, the mayor. Uh, art critics, uh, actors, dancers, as you know, I have a traveling road show, so uh, I'm covering a lot of things that aren't necessarily political, but uh, that's one of the great things about Channel 17 is we see all aspects of the community here, and I think through my lens it enables me to uh, experience the community, and I love to volunteer in the community. It's also great. James, your programs are really great. I'll just remind people, it's your program's called The Artful Word, and it runs on Channel 17, and also you have some episodes that run on Channel 15, right? Yes, I've been at Channel 15 in March for 13 years, and I've had the great good fortune to be here at Channel 17 uh, in July 5th for four years. And I've done a show once a week uh, for four years, and uh, it's quite a workload, but uh, it really gives me something to do, and I love doing it. And it's just, uh, you really qualify as one of the most prolific and, and um, intent community producers that we have. So thank you so much for being here, and have a great holiday. Well, Merry Christmas, and thank have you. a wonderful holiday. Thank you, James. So James Drew, really very valued, val valued member of our community here at Channel 17. You know, we have behind the camera, we have two young, young ladies, Stella Rose Johnson, who happens to be related to me, and Allison Simons, who's running the camera. And um, they're running, and we also have Greg, who's on the, the other camera here. We have a studio full of people, and it's kind of a fun night, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So last year, you got an award, but you didn't get here until I remember. <laughs> so this year, you're going to help me with the awards. But first, why don't we interview Jen Berger? Do you want to do the interview? Uh, you can. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, Jen Berger, Peace and Justice Hi. Center. How are you, darling? Hey, how are you? Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So Jen Berger works with uh, the Peace and Justice Center, and you've been doing video on and off different yeah. projects. What's the most recent project you've been working on? I just completed a 40-minute DVD about truth and military recruitment with interviews done at soldiers um, and veterans at Winter Soldier a few years ago. Wow. So you finally got that done. It took a little while, didn't it? Yep, it's done. Yeah. So were you surprised when you produced your video at how easy or hard it was to do the work? Um, yeah, it turned out that once it, just, it was a process of learning about putting, using the equipment and how to kind of storyboard and then figuring out the specific programs. Um, but I had a lot of help from you guys, actually. That was really helpful. And um, tell us why in your justice work, your community justice work, how does free speech fit into that scheme and your values? Well, I mean, we're in a day and age where we're not getting a lot of the information out to the people. The media is 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 filtered, you know, through government and through a lot of funds, and we don't have the, the voice of the people or the truth of what's actually happening. And the community television really gets the information out there and makes it available to people, um, so they can actually make up their mind about what's going on instead of just hearing the news. I, I think that's beautifully put. Thank you so much, and thanks for all your support. So, um, you know, you may not know this, Henry, but when Nat, Air, and I, and actually I'll say this, the, the governor's here. This is Governor Huff. Hello, how are you? I'm just fine. Thanks for joining us. This is Henry Prine. He's one of our stars. Oh, really? Oh, he is. Oh, my goodness. He's worked his way up into the director's room. Wow, you're important then. I guess so. I know, and I think he'll be running the place in a couple of years. Well, why not? Well, I'm, that's what I'm hoping, maybe. <laughs> so I, the story I was telling Henry is that one of the first programs we ever did in the Decision Maker series, we got to interview you. And that was a long time ago, 25, 24 years ago. Is that the time that they, an awful lot of people decided they wouldn't subscribe to your station? <laughs> <laughs> so I think you help viewership. In fact, I think, it, you know, at that time, we were probably, we did this very extended interview with you. We did an hour-long interview, and I don't think anybody was doing lengthy interviews in the media at that time. I don't think so either. It's unusual. Usually people get bored after the first long format we were experimenting with. Do you um, have any thoughts about why community access channels like this are important for, for democracy? Or for any other reason? Well, I think it's a people's channel. And, uh, and it's essential in a time when people seem to show the side. But it's a focal point for ordinary people speak about what concerns them, what they believe in. I think it's critical. What do you think about the health care debate that's going on right now? In fact, I think I agree with Howard Dean. If they've done, taken the guts out of that bill, and so they might as well forget about it. It's just terribly disappointing to me. Well, there was so much momentum and hope behind it, I think. Well, it seems to me that implausible, very difficult to accept. Three people who say they are Democrats are not willing to join 57 other Democrats and do something that this country desperately needs. So I, like many people, I'm damn mad about it. Well, I'm glad you were able to come here tonight and have some fun. Well, I didn't come here to be in the <laughs> Thank you so much, Governor. Okay. Just a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks very much. So we're going to um, give out some awards now. Oh, yes, we have Doug Racine. Great. Good news. Doug, how are you? Thanks for joining us. It's so My pleasure. nice of you to come to this party. Oh, it's great. To, it's a great party going on. So I, I love the holiday season. So thanks for doing this. Yeah, some great people. So um, are you going to be on the road a lot in 2010? I'm going to be on the road a whole lot. Um, I think people know that I am a candidate for governor. I've got to go through the next legislative session. That's my job uh, in the state senate, chair of the health and welfare committee. Uh, but uh, politics will be part of it. Uh, people are going to get to get to see more of me. We're going to talk about where Vermont's going to go after we get past the next election. And 
when you think about um, these, the public access channels that now serve Vermont, there are 23 centers and 44 channels. So, yeah. you? What's been your experience in, when you go to those community centers? Um, what I what I see in Channel 17 and the others is a real opportunity for Vermonters to, to be really connected with government and what's going on in their communities. It's just another way for people to hear from those of us who are in office, running for office, uh, see what's going on uh, with their local government. And if we want democracy to work, which we do, uh, people have to be informed. And uh, whenever I'm on one of your programs or one of the other programs at the other uh, stations around the state, uh, I hear back from a lot of people that they saw it, they were interested, uh, sometimes they agree, sometimes they disagree, and that's fine. Uh, but it's a real public service, so I thank you for that. Well, thank you so much, and good luck this year. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Thanks Doug. Doug Racine, who is um, a member of the Senate, Chittenden County delegation, and also is going to be running, is running for governor. He announced really early in, in the session. So maybe we'll give some awards. I'm not sure everyone, people aren't going to really be able to hear me, so I'm just going to sort of talk through these awards because... Um, there's some pretty there's some pretty good ones. We've got we've had a lot of good neighborhood planning assembly coverage, as, uh -huh. right? As you yep. know, quite often. And um, a lot of community producers have come and been doing these shows, including Sarah Flash, who's been doing some great NPA coverage. Steve Norman, who's an outstanding community producer, and um, and maybe actually, if you ask Megan, if you can find Megan to find Steve Norman, let maybe we'll get him up here. Okay, that'll be good. And we also have. Um, here we go. Thanks, Allison. Brian Davis from the Met the Metropolitan Planning Organization, who's been covering their meetings and opening the door to regional planning, and Lee Terhune, Phil Levine, Chuck Celine, and Carol Levine, and Nisha Surprise, who host, produce, and do the camera work for the Ward Four and Seven Live NPA show. That's a really neat show. We also um, we've got some wonderful supporters and longtime volunteers, and one of them is Jonathan McCandless, who's a longtime live show volunteer, and um, Ivan, who is his co cohort, was a volunteer for many years, too, and the two of them have been delightful to have here behind the cameras. Melinda Moulton has been doing On the Waterfront for many years. She's a very reliable live show host. And then um, Jennifer Wallace Broder, who I think is with AARP, I want to say, um, who works and cooperates with other organizations in her show, which is Burlington Sustainable um, Communities. We also have a sustainable transportation show that's uh, by the CCTA. Do you ever cover that one? Yes. That's when you're doing a live show. Yes. There they come. Yes. And what are the kind of things they talk about? Um, they talk about car share, Vermont, and. CCTA and the bus, new bus routes, and, uh, and um, the bike, bike place, I can't remember the name of it right now, like a, local like a local motion, it's about a lot of great stuff about sustainable transportation, yeah. it's a really interesting show. Well oh, that's good, that's Chris Cole and Annie Borden and Chapin Spencer, and they model how partner organizations can lot, share a live show spot. And then we've got the Woodchuck Report, those, their Friday night show, and Bonnie Scott and Roel Wheelock maintain a, li a live, live show every month, but they also have a little baby that comes to their shows and, and um, sort of sits on the set with them while they do their work. And then um, in uh, the last two people that I want to recognize, and maybe we'll, we can bring Nick here, I'm not sure if Andy's here as well, but Nick Carter and Andy Crawford, who are two CCTV staff people, who they're new this year, and they're really just, it's been fantastic to have them here with us. So maybe you can find Nick and we'll interview him after um, Michael with Lewis. So those are the uh, folks we have awards for. And we're going to hear now from Michael with Lewis, Front Porch Forum, which is really the, uh, an online counterpart in a lot of ways to Channel 17. Michael, thank you for coming. It's nice to see you. It's really you. great that you came. Happy I appreciate holidays. it. So Front Porch Forum is a real international model for bringing people together in their communities and online. It's really gotten a lot of attention in the last couple of years, haven't you? Yeah, it's done great. It's, um, you know, we're, we host a network of online neighborhood forums. The blank is Chittenden and Grand Isle counties uh, and Starksboro. And anybody can sign up. It's free. And it's a great way to connect with your nearby neighbors. And Grand Isle is new this year, right? Yeah, recently Grand Isle, uh, South Hero, Grand Isle, North Hero, Isle of Mott, and Alberg all have joined Front Porch Forum. And uh, there's several hundred households who have signed up. Um, I, I know of at least one lost cat that's been found, and, uh, and several other things have been going on there. So. so is it sort of picking up? Are people using the resource? Yeah, 
yeah, it's, it's starting to catch hold. You know, winter time in the islands, it's a little, a little tough to get out and see your neighbors. Um, so I think it's a, uh, you know, offers a lot of potential there, and we're looking forward to getting more and more people to sign up. So have you been surprised at how your project has grown? Sure, it's, uh, it's really been remarkable in, in, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, we started this out just in our own neighborhood in the South End uh, many years ago, and then a few years ago we opened up more broadly to anybody who lives in the area. And now there are 17,000 households um, in the region who subscribe to Front Porch Forum, including nearly half of Burlington um, and, and half of communities like Huntington and Westford and really any of these towns. There are 25 towns now that have it. And it's a great place, like I say, to um, find a lost pet or to sell a car or to voice an opinion about uh, the select board or what have you. How are you finding the, um, the, the, I guess, the revenue model, the ad selling? And I mean, are you finding on that side people are interested in getting out in front of those folks? Yeah, well, of course, you know, making ends meet on the Internet is really challenging. And so we primarily we sell ads to local businesses. And um, our, our local advertisers have done very well. And, um, uh, you know, because people pay attention to their neighborhood news. And if your ad's right in there, they tend to pay attention. So. We're getting close to breaking even. We're, we're, you know, we're well on our way, but it's 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 a it's a challenging um, undertaking. And I want to say thanks to everybody. We had a, a recent appeal to our membership to become a supporting member, and um, all the many people who who um, sent in a donation. Thank you. That was great. Great. That must have been heartening. This sort of the Wikipedia model. Yes. So, um, how do you see public access as an adjunct to the work that you're doing, or as a value to the community? Well, what we've found is that when people, many people don't feel very connected to their, to their neighborhood and community, and oftentimes we, we hear back from people who use Front Porch Forum that they, 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 they sell their bicycle or they give away their used couch or whatever, and in that process they get to know some neighbors, and then they get to know more neighbors and more neighbors, and pretty soon they're feeling really connected. And, um, and, and the step after that is they get more involved in their local community. They go to Green Up Day, or, or they pitch in and help uh, shovel out a senior citizen who lives down the block. And so, you know, I would think that's the same spirit of, of public access. Um, and so, people getting more involved in the local community. So, I see Front Porch Forum as kind of the minor leagues, maybe, and you're the major leagues. Well, maybe we're, we're all the leagues, you know, in a way, because we're, we've got a lot of the same people who watch and who participate. I mean, it's a particular kind of person, yep. you know, in a way. It's an active citizen, active citizen person. I guess that's the way I might describe it. So thank you so much for joining us you. and your support of our work and all the work you're doing. Thank you very much. All right, Michael with Lewis, really great ally of this project. Now you found Nick Carter. Yes. All right, let's bring the man on. Let's bring him on, Nick Carter. Nick Carter, congratulations. Give the, give me a hug right. there, buddy. Hey. They're on the other side of the camera. Hello. Hello, Burlington. <laughs> Happy holidays. Whatever your persuasion, we're all welcoming. Oh, what's my special award? What do we got here? Look at that. Look at that. Let's hold that up for the viewing audience. Nick Carter came to us out of um, a political campaign, and he has brought his skills and enthusiasm and great dedication and incredible ability to work hard to the project, and it's just been a pleasure to work with you. So thank you so much. Well, I just wanted to say it's been a pleasure to work with everybody at uh, Channel 17 CCTV. can ask for a better group of people, and uh, they really encompass the spirit of community media. Thanks for a great party, by the way. Anytime. Yeah, I mean, not only is he a great coworker, but he can make some real mean stuff mushrooms. So thank you. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot. That's great. Say that one more time. Steve Norman's next. Oh my gosh, you know, Steve Norman, I think 25 years ago, he was in on the ground floor. I have these mailing lists with his name on it. From 25 years ago. Let's see what he's got to say. Steve Norman, we've got an award for him. Steve. Thanks for coming. Hey, How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Thanks for all your work. We have a little award and recognition for your great contribution. Oh, as you're too kind. Well, no, you're doing all the work. <laughs> so Steve is a, um, a great community producer, and um, there you go. You got your name on that. There you 
you go. We're holding it up. There we go. And outstanding NPA coverage. That's what you got that award for. We love those NPOs. NPAs. We're so lucky to have people like you covering. Well, uh, it's a privilege and an honor, and I enjoy the production work. What motivates you to cover those meetings? Um, somebody needs to do it, and I don't even get cable, so I don't get to watch it except online. But I can watch them online, and uh, and people people who can't make the meetings come, you know, watch it too. So we need to get that, and we need to get people to the meetings. We need to reach people who can't make the meetings, and a lot of good stuff goes on there. The neighborhood planning assemblies are a long-time legacy of the Burlington political structure, aren't they? Yes, they are, and uh, they need constant reinforcement. We need to build the audience, get people out, get to topics that get people interested. Um, we're trying to uh, make sure that the um, city council does not allow development projects to have ad hoc neighborhood meetings. We want them to bring those issues to the NPA meetings, which is where they should be, where so people don't have to go to multiple meetings to find out what the plans are to build new uh, infrastructure in their neighborhoods. Um, so uh, we, we try to keep it happening there. Thank you so much for Thank your work. You. We really appreciate it. Okay. All right, you know, you want to interview Ivan? Yeah, you can do it. Okay. All right, I'm going to let Henry interview Ivan. Ivan's the best. You got my favorite shirt on there, buddy. Okay. Hey, Ivan. Hi. So, well, how long have you been here at Channel 17? Six years. What have you been doing over this past six years? Um, hold on just a second. I always wanted to do this on camera. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what was the question again? What have you been doing here at Channel 17? Oh, everything. Oh, everything from running my own show to um, uh, maintaining the equipment and stuff like that and uh, running the camera. Put out some of your favorite things about Channel 17? My favorite things about Channel 17? Well, it's a great place to just uh, practice your craft and just learn camera work and stuff like that. It's very good for if you want to get involved in the animation. For all your great contribution as uh, as a volunteer, many how many years did you do that live show? I do a live show here. Yeah, live show, the volunteering on the uh, camera. Yeah, I did that. Wow. Yeah. Too many. Yeah. Too many years. Well, thank you for doing that. We love you, Ivan. Yeah, Thanks I think a lot. Probably just sure a little too much. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get back to you. Right. It's a lot. So we have uh, Megan Emery. We're going to interview. Okay. Yeah, Megan. How are you? This is Henry Prine, one of our Hi, star Henry. volunteers. Nice to meet you, too. I'm Megan Emery, and I'm a trustee of Channel 17. Awesome. Yeah, and a city councilor of South Burlington, and a professor of French and culture at UVM, I guess. And a mom of two sons. It's great that you came. Thanks so much. Tell us a little bit about why it's um, you like being on the Channel 17 trustees and why you feel that's an important thing to do. Well, when I started out as city councilor, they asked me what I wanted to do as my service, and Channel 17 was on the list, and I think that having free access to media is key to good government that is transparent and accountable, and I think a lot of people in South Burlington really rely on Channel 17, on the clickable agendas online especially, um, but also they watch Sunday evenings and they even tell me about them, or they, you know, or other meetings that I attend too, so it's, it's very useful, I think, and it's a way for people who can't get to the meetings or are too busy, uh, since they're on weeknights, that they can go on the weekends or anytime and click on the agenda and take a look at what's going on. It's important. This year coming up, we're going to be renegotiating with Comcast for a new Channel 17 contract. That's right. So what are you thinking, what, what should we tell people about what to look forward to with that? <laughs> Well, let's just keep Channel 17 moving ahead with the funding it needs in order to, to access more people and to train more people and to be able to put all of this valuable programming on the air. 
this is a local community where for not very much money we can get a lot done with Channel 17 and CCTV in general. So I think it's really worth uh, those few pennies for Comcast, which mean a whole lot more to us. I think, you know, we're so grateful to the cable, cable subscribers of, of Comcast and Burlington Telecom because they're the ones who support this channel. And people across the community, whether they're cable subscribers or not, use the channel. And so we're very fortunate to have that level of support from the community. Definitely. Definitely. A lot of people use television as their main source of information these days. Newspapers are struggling to, to stay alive. And it's important for us to have that real access, direct access, to the people who make the decisions and are using tax dollars and all kinds of important resources of the community. It's important for people to have that access. Thank you so much, and thanks for your service on the trustees. We really appreciate it. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you, too. Okay. All right, you know, we have Greg Besso, who's behind that camera, and I know he's just dying to be interviewed, so how are you? Were you just dying? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I guess you could say I was. I was, uh, well, uh, I've been working here for quite some time, you know? Since how old were you? I was 14 when I started here. And so what do we got now? We got a great award for you for all your work. Oh, Yeah, I've, uh, well, uh, it's the experience. See, I was planning on going to Linden State College, which is a top-notch television studies program, and uh, this has given me quite a good experience with it. I'm sure I'll continue my work. Back behind that camera and do all that great work you're doing. We love that. We love what he's doing. So, um, you know, we're, we got a couple more minutes, and I just wanted to recognize Scott Moody, and maybe we'll bring him over, because he worked at CAX for a long time, and now he works here at Channel 17. So why don't we bring him on over? Okay. All right, here we go. So Henry's going to go get Scott. I'm just going to remind you all that tw 20, um, 2009 was a big year, a big year for, um, he's right there, for CCTV because it's our 25th anniversary and we had some great events. We had an April retrospective. We have a June holiday party. We've been doing CCTV re Rewind, all kinds of great programs. And then in 2010, CCTV and Channel 17 have about 280 things going on next year, not including all the programs we produce. So you're going to want to check out our website, www.cctv.org or channel17.org, and find out the amazing events that we're going to have lined up for you starting the 1st of January, including the Media Maven series, which are continuing, and of course a new series called the NPO Mavens. So Scott, we got three minutes, so why don't you come on Hello, over Julie, here. How, how are you? Fantastic. Fantastic. We're so happy that um, we snagged you from Channel 3. Well, I'm, I'm happy to be here. It's been uh, just a wonderful experience with uh, CCTV, and I, uh, I, I've, it's been a learning experience for me, um, going out and shooting all, all the... Um, municipal meetings and, and, and uh, board meetings and stuff like that. I, I'm just learning so much about how our government works, how um, municipalities work, how the different uh, utilities work. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful experience and I'm happy to be here. And we're just so glad that maybe you bring a real high level of skill to the camera work and we really appreciate that. I, tr I try to, you know, I try to. And, and I try to, try to get the, you know, the, the, the word of the, the government out to the people and that's what we're all about and I'm, I'm just happy to be in, in uh, grateful to be part of the team. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and happy holidays. Happy holidays to you, too. Happy holidays to you guys out there. Yeah! Woo! Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. So, Henry, we're about to wrap up here, buddy. Any closing words for the people out there? Well, keep watching Channel 17. It's great. There you go. That, I mean, you couldn't say it any better than that. And then one more minute, or you have something to say? One more minute. That was a one more minute. Oh, we have a phone call on line one. Okay. Hi, we've got a couple seconds left. How you doing? Oh, I don't know if I can hear you. Hello, are you there? We're there. We're about to go off the air, but how you doing? Happy holidays from Dale. Great, hey, great Dale. on Thanks. Channel 17 for the years. Thank you very much. Thank you. We love that you're our, you, you probably are going to get caller of the year this year, Dale. So thank you. We have a little thank word you for you. Anytime Good you want to come over. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks to everyone here at Channel 17. Thank you, Henry Prine, my trusty co-host. Thank you to Allison Simons and to Greg and to Stella Rose for being here and running the camera and being part of this great, great 
great operation. We've got Kevin in the studio. We've got all kinds of fabulous people here. And we really couldn't make public access television happen without you. So stay tuned for 2010. Channel 17 will be renegotiating its contract with Comcast. We have all kinds of great events lined up. And of course, here at 525, we always have the live show. So stay tuned and have a great year.